Hello everyone! In this video, I'll be showing how you can make a mini plasma cutter from an arc lighter. These lighters have just recently started to gain popularity, and they work by generating a high voltage arc between two exposed electrodes. A quick spark can burn a clean hole through paper, but holding for any longer causes it to ignite. To turn this into a functional plasma cutter, the first thing I'll need to make is a heat sink to keep the material around the arc cold enough that it doesn't burst into flame. I went to a local hardware store and asked to have a 4 inch square cut from a sheet of glass. To keep from cutting myself, I used a piece of sandpaper to blunt the edges. Now I need to drill a hole through the center of this glass, which is a task that requires the drill bit to be submerged in water. A trick for this is to glue a ring onto the glass itself, which can then be filled with water before drilling. This is a 1 8 inch diameter spear tipped drill bit, specifically made to drill through glass and ceramics. You can use one of these bits in a regular hand drill, but a drill press makes things easier. It's important to use very light pressure or the glass may crack. As soon as the bit starts to make it through, stop drilling and flip the glass over. The hole can then be completed from the other side. We're done with the ring, so that can now be removed. Some rubbing alcohol will loosen the hot glue if it doesn't peel off easily. Okay, I think it's about time we open up the lighter to see what we're working with. There's just one screw on the bottom of this one, and then the case pulls right off. Next I need to remove the top portion so I can get at the output wires, and this is just held together with a series of steel pins. Last of all is a small piece of ceramic that holds the output wires in place. After removing it, I'm finished with all the necessary modifications and the electronics can be reinstalled in the case. These two wires will be the outputs that lead to the plasma cutter, so I'll lengthen them by splicing on some extra wire. We no longer want the spark to jump between these two connections, so some shrink wrap tubing is important to keep them insulated. For purely aesthetic purposes, I drilled two holes through the lighter's lid so it could fit back on top of the case with the wires passing through. I used hot glue to secure it, though it could have also been reinstalled with the original pins if I wanted it to open and close. This is just about ready to join to the glass plate, but first I need to attach an electrode to one of the output wires. I'm just using a small steel screw that should survive the electrical arc, and I've trimmed it short enough to not quite pass all the way through the thickness of the glass. I first tried hot glue to hold the screw in place, but later replaced it with epoxy when I found the electrode became too warm for the hot glue to stay solid. As it is, this would now be a functional plasma cutter, but one final addition is a small handle to help guide the glass. The cutting head is now complete, but there is one more item necessary to act as a conductive work surface. A scrap piece of steel like this one works well, or you could use a steel baking sheet or even the bottom of an old frying pan. This base plate will act as the electrode opposite the one mounted to the glass, so the extra output wire should be placed where it will make good electrical contact. And that's it, we're now ready to start cutting. The arc provided by the lighter can easily cut thin materials like paper, and since the glass and steel base plate absorb the excess heat, the paper burns only where the arc passes through. It was difficult for me to operate the plasma cutter and my camera at the same time, but with careful movement it's possible to cut shapes with a good deal of precision. It's certainly a lot of fun to use. My sponsor for this video was Soylent. I had been curious to try their product, which is a bottled meal since I first heard of them about a year ago. It's meant to be able to nutritionally replace any meal, though not necessarily to take the place of other food entirely. The purpose is to provide a healthy option when you might not have time to prepare something else. Before I agreed to be sponsored by Soylent, I purchased some with my own money to make sure it was something I could recommend. I was pleasantly surprised with how well I liked it. If you'd like to try some yourself, use the link I've placed in the video description below. For every new subscriber who signs up through this link, Soylent will donate 4 meals to World Food Program USA. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel Nighthawk in Light, and check out some of my past projects. Thank you for watching!